It's your boy, the media prince, and I am with the dynamic cast and producer of Under the Influence coming to TV One tonight. So I must say that the trailer got my heart beating fast already. So it looks like it's going to be a tear joker. And I'm excited for us to see it tonight and make Sunday such an epic night on TV One yet again. So I want to ask you, because uh, we can see from the graphic, Denise, that uh, you are in a crossfire between two, <laughs> two men. Um, can you tell us about this trifecta and who your role is? So I play the character Danae Ryan. And yes, honey, there is a whole entanglement <laughs> <laughs> happening here okay uh and i am married to robert ryan who is jared warford's character that is my husband and i have a substance abuse problem in which i seek therapy through aa to save my marriage and to save myself and that's when i meet bj Britt, who plays seth and um I'm under the influence of him and my alcoholism and all, all of our actions have consequences in this movie. And that's what this movie will show you. We'll show you all of the consequences. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Now I know Courtney Miller, the director really allowed for you guys to tap into as much emotions as possible to bring this role to life. Um, anybody can answer how important and how vital was that to make sure that you you put that much effort into the role? Let Jared go first. Go ahead, Denise. Oh. <laughs> uh, at least for me, I know that you know he was very hands on even from the beginning. I mean, I, I've done a lot of uh, urban films and indie films and and projects, and this was actually the first time in my career that I was able to have rehearsals and actually develop a character with the director. So immediately, like literally the day that I got offered the part, I was in contact with the director and he told me who the other actors were, uh, immediately was able to exchange information with them and start, you know, uh, rehearsing and, and discussing our characters and breaking them down. And so uh, working with him with that was just very instrumental in being able to develop this character and and the freedom that he did give us, it allowed us to give him some input, ask a lot of questions. There were times that I had some ideas. I'm like, well, I wanted, he's like, well, that's not true to that character. Denise might do that, but Danae, well, I'd be like, okay, but he was very gracious, gracious with, you know what? Do one for you how you want to do it. And mm. then do one for me and let's see which way it goes. And then I would do it. And he would be like, I like that better. He'd be like, yeah, I like what I wrote better. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, I second everything Denise said. Courtney's great to work with. Uh, early on, we rehearsed. Uh, he was, you know, accessible via like text message or phone, you know, if you if you had further questions that might help you explore your character even deeper. So uh, it was a fun process. Just a lot of support overall from Courtney, as well as working with Denise and BJ and Jason. So it's great. OK, so. It does tackle a serious issue uh, in the arena of alcohol abuse. What was that world like diving into that? And was that a role that's familiar that you have anybody that you were able to tap into in that in that arena? Um, I actually have been open about this. I have family members who have um, had addictions and I actually mm. have an aunt who passed from liver cancer from being an alcoholic. Oh, I'm sorry. And so that that really affected our family greatly. Um, I've never had any addiction other than shoe shopping and being a foodie. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't think those are bad problems to have, okay? Um, but no, uh, honestly, it, it was, I, I didn't have an experience to tap into personally, um, like my, my own self in, in, in alcoholism, but, I do know what it's like to have those type of like under the influence type of addictions where it's like, I really want this or I want this relationship to work and I'm, I'm dealing with this person and I know the lengths that I'm willing to go through to, to make that work or to, to get what it is that I need from that situation. So you can kind of tie those situations and then have conversations with people who have had alcohol abuse so that's mm. how i was able to do that particular part of that role and what about you jared have you ever been a scorned husband 
<laughs> no, I, I haven't been a scorn husband. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I haven't. Um, but like Denise, I, I did grow up uh, with an uncle that was was uh, an alcoholic, and he also experimented with with some drugs. So um, you know, so I could I could see that you know on the outside looking in, and you know, I think I think for me it wasn't. It wasn't a lot of personal things that I could pull from so much, but I think the writing was just good enough. Like you could see what Robert's intentions were. You could clearly see what he wanted, what his uh, most like basic need was and, you know, how that affected how he treated Danae. But also like in, in this story, you'll see that there is some redemption. There is there is love. There's forgiveness. So. Um, I think we could all like relate to that, whether we relate personally somehow in a previous relationship or we're on the outside looking in how other people have navigated their relationships. And we happen to hear those stories. So okay, yeah. okay. I think the writing was great. OK. Now, Jason, as a producer, man, we know you're on the cutting edge of getting this movie out. When what scene would you say you knew like, oh, this is this is it. This is it. Do you have that <laughs> moment <laughs> that you can recall? Um, it is actually multiple. A couple of them I can't say because it'll spoil the movie. <laughs> but there were there there were also scenes in reading the script that immediately stood out to me. Um, and then once we see the execution, it was like, oh yeah, we got a hit. Um, and there were a few in particular. Um. And there was a scene with BJ by himself. There was a scene with Denise and BJ. Then there was a scene with with Jared um, that was very artistic, artist, artistically crafted by our, our director and DP. Jared, I think you know which one I'm talking about. I don't want to spoil it. But just the way that it was executed, um, it, it was just... Like th those are the things, and I'm sorry I can't give specifics, but you know, <laughs> but there were multiple scenes that really let me know that this movie was on another level of what you would expect from a typical thriller. Mm -hmm. And like I said, that came both on the script level, reading certain things, and it also came um, once I actually saw the execution. And and shout out to the team because they all did an amazing job. Uh, of, of bringing these characters to life and Courtney at the helm like he was amazing he was amazing and shout out to Jelani the DP because the movie is beautiful as well entire so. listen we had an entire uh black camera crew yeah so looking up and seeing all these black men and women behind the cameras was my first time experiencing that Amen. so that was black that was really month. yeah black yeah. history that was really amazing right. and i just want to slide this in real quick because we've been giving kudos to a lot of people but i think even him being on this zoom is a testament to how involved jason has been throughout this filming process like he was on set and a lot of people don't know this because everybody wasn't there to the end but i mean i remember rapping at like 2 a.m one time and jason and i were the last two people leaving set when the crew <laughs> when they said cut Jason and I were still outside talking. I was waiting for my sprinter and he, he, he waited with me until my sprinter came to get me, you know, and he's been so hands-on. And this is the first time that I've had an executive producer, even from a network, come to set, watch our scenes, encourage us, say, yo, that was great. Like, I've, I've never had that before. I've always just had just the cast and crew and that, that was it. So I think all of those elements really made this project special but it also made it dope because when you have those dope elements of all the people around you i mean it's impossible to fail at that mm, i love that you said yeah. that too because i think you're by you saying that you also set a new trajectory that a lot of people can actually feel how important it is to have the eps really invested in what they're what you're doing and they're with you it makes the flow better so hopefully this can open the door for more eps to do to to stand up and get to work within that round. Now, here's the I don't know, I think we got a unicorn here. I think we might yeah. have a unicorn. <laughs> I can text him at midnight and be like, hey, I don't like my picture. And he's like, I got you. He was like, let's have a conversation. <laughs> you, you know, it, it, you, you got to, you know, it, 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 it's not to derail too much, but I, I appreciate that. Shout out, Denise. And um, I thank you for that because it, it's something that really 
people don't really see it. That's the it's the part of the job. Like there's a reason why I'm behind the scenes. You know, like I don't get all the 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 praise and the FaceTime and all that. And the, but it's work that I do because I I love it. And you know, if I'm going to be involved in it, I want to do the best that I can, and I want to be there for the crew and the cast and everybody. Um, and honestly, it's not always there's not always an opportunity for me to be on set all the time. You know, because there's a lot of different projects going on, um, but it was important um, just to to be present and be there. Um, and it also helps makes my job a lot easier when I start reviewing cuts because I was there. So when I start <laughs> looking at dailies, I was there. When I get a cut, I was there. So it it, it makes it makes my job a lot easier in the in the long run too. <laughs> hey, hey. So here's a funny question: Who acted the most? under the influence when it came to remembering their lines. <laughs> wait, 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 what do you mean? Like, um, who, who knew their lines or who forgot their lines? Who forgot their lines. <laughs> oh, I had to remember my words every other minute. <laughs> but you have to remember, I was also in like, what, 97% of the movie. I'm yeah. in nine, like, if there were 100 pages, I was in 97 pages. And so learning all of that dialogue, having the emotion, uh, what people don't also understand is like, I, 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 uh, I was in a relationship when I, you know, was doing this film. So I'm also battling, like having to have an emotional on-screen connection with two different men and physically prepare my, cause I don't just kiss random people. Right. <laughs> so now I'm having to kiss two different men and then go home and be like, Hey, you okay with getting a kiss? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like a lot of those things I had to process on set. So uh, but also there were moments where we were dealing with and we were battling with severe thunderstorms during the filming of this movie. Wow. So a lot of scenes we were supposed to shoot outside, they were like, mm, no, we're shooting that inside today. And then there were times where it's like, listen, we have to get this outside, outside shot. And I'm like, in whole different hair and makeup, I'm like, you understand black girl hair and <laughs> rain, right? Like, mm -hmm. that's not going to work. Um <laughs> So, I mean, just, <laughs> just like all of those things, it just, I battled with trying to remember all my scenes when they got moved around. I, I would be focused on one scene and they're like, we're going to shoot tomorrow's scene today. And I'm like, I don't know any of those words. <laughs> so, so I think I was the worst out of everyone. Well, it looked like you're the pro and you st st stood up and showed them what you made up. <laughs> yeah, Shout out to tell. photographic you memory. In the final version, you can't tell which scenes those were. She still did it. She still Man. killed it. <laughs> so I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, what, Denise, with your character, what is the overall message you want viewers to walk away with? And what do you say to Denise everywhere? I would say I'm going to give some advice that my cousin gave me when I was going through a really hard situation in a relationship. He said, be easy and have grace with yourself, mm. but not with him. And I was like, that don't make sense until I started giving myself grace and I knew what that meant. I hope people that are in Danae's situation, I hope that they give grace to themselves in their uh, acceptance and accountability process and phase, their uh, redemptive phase, their healing phase, and then their moving forward phase. Because I mean, again, I, I haven't faced severe addictions like that, but I've seen immediate family and family members and friends deal with it. I've had friends who have succumbed to uh, addictions and I, I want y'all to stay. I want y'all to be here. I want y'all to see another day. And I think that the first step in that is having grace with yourself and, and forgiving yourself mm. and knowing that you can come out on the other side of that better. Mm. And it is, it is one day at a time. It's one step at a time. It's cliche, but it's real life. You watch any person who has ever had to deal with a disability and that's had to learn how to walk again, talk again, uh, do anything starting over as an adult that came easy to a child. It's literally one step at a time. And then you see them running later. So I like that. Man, Jerry, you're on the flip side because you're, you play the character <laughs> who is kind of triggering the trauma from how you're using your wife and then it, it yeah. out of pulse into this further destruction. 
What do you say to those men that are the triggers to trauma for the, the women in those situations? Yeah, I think I think the message is, you know, we have to uh, be at peace with ourselves, do what we need to do in our lives so that we can, you know, exude that peace and then bring that peace into the household, bring that peace into our families. Um, because, yeah, at first you probably won't. You may not like Robert too much. Right? <laughs> um, and and also, I think it's important men or just human beings in general, like to to be able to you know take accountability and make take the steps to to do better because so, if you if you're hurting somebody else you're also probably hurting your, yourself first you know mm-hmm. so, um you know because what you what you do on the outside is like you know on the inside is happening too so um yeah i think that's it mm-hmm. and I, I think what's also um an amazing feat about this movie too and i've watched the trailer over and over again and we have these millennial discussions of just you know we're at an era where drinking is so prevalent and like just having a good time but not really realizing the effects it can cause in the long run and movies like this kind of let you remind you of those effects couldn't go further to a place where you don't realize you have control so I think this movie does answer a, a question for a lot of us millennials who think we got it under control. We're just going to have this drink here. We're just going to do this. And then you realize you got to really be prepared for this realm when you're really stepping into drinking and seeing how volatile it can go with that. And some of us use it as coping mechanism. I'm just going to take a drink. We'll forget this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to just take a drink to ease this out. And then you realize when you wake up from it, you have done a lot of damage and, you know, not only to yourself, but uh, to people around you. So I think mm-hmm. this movie will also answer a lot of the theories and thoughts that we have in connection with drinking and just how far it can go. Did you guys know that you may be helping those thought or think pieces when you guys were creating this movie? Oh, that's one of the reasons why I accepted it. Um, I was in a very uh, toxic relationship with a narcissist. And that so this, so under the influence, um, it was originally called 13th Step, but then it was changed to under the influence. And at first I was like, no. But then as I thought about the movie, I thought, you know what? This is the perfect title because not only is she under the influence of alcohol, she's also under the influence of her narcissistic husband. And his career path, she's also under the influence of who, you know, Seth, who is another narcissist mm. that has 13th stepped her. Um, so, I mean, when you're dealing with narcissists like that, when you're under the, con- under the influence or under the hypnosis of a substance, it's easy for someone like that to take mm. advantage of you. And that's why, you know, I mean, sidebar, that's why they say that, you know, um, even sen- like uh, consensual sex, when you're under the influence, isn't consensual, it's still rape, because there's no way you can make a, a real decision. great decision when you're under the influence of something. And so that's why when you're in a relationship with a narcissist, or you're being manipulated by someone, you know, underage children, it's kind of like, was I really there? What mm. was I making a sound decision? And so uh, that's what this movie really shows you. It shows you how manipulated she has been her whole life. And, mm. you know, I, I'm excited for people to see that there's a part of their life that could go this way. And these consequences could happen if you allow that to. Exactly. And I think we all can see we're in the age where people are just loving these toxic relationships and not realizing Mm -hmm. they're anchored by being under the influence. And it's really not the message of love that you really want to have in your life. It's literally the wrong message. So Mm -hmm. it's movies like this that allow you to really follow a story because we can't go home with these people. We just see what they show on social media. But a movie like this allows you to kind of see what these people are going through at home and how they're coping and how they can get through it and really saying, no, nah, this ain't for me. This ain't for me at all. And so I think it definitely answers that void, especially when we're in a, a, a hot time where people are publicizing and glorizing toxic relationships like that's it. And that is 100 percent not it. So. 
before I let you guys go, because I know you guys are busy, booked and busy, the movie come out tonight. <laughs> I want to play a game with you guys, um, and I'm going to give you some scenarios, and you let me know if they are all right or they under the influence. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I, li I like these takes. I like this. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this person has bought three family-sized bags of Doritos and ate all of them in one night. Are they all right? Or are they under the influence? Under the influence. Under the influence. <laughs> Don't ask me because I'm going to be like, they all right with me. <laughs> <laughs> so much food is my addiction. <laughs> all right, here's one. The shoulder on the highway has become a lane and they are flying through traffic. They all right? Or are they <laughs> under the influence? Definitely under the influence. Under the influence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when, when I wrote this, I had a little thing. I'm like, hey, are they late for work? They <laughs> <laughs> right, is there an emergency? Maybe they got to get to the hospital. <laughs> All right. So this one, Jason, you could really give me this one. Call time on set was 8 a.m., but they showed up at 11 a.m. Are mm -hmm. they all right or are they under the influence? Hey, <laughs> most of them, I mean... It's staggered. If, if I show up at 11, I'm all right. But if, if Denise <laughs> shows up at 11, she's That's called entitled. Room. That's and called I don't entitled. Need to hair and makeup, none. I just need to show up. So it depends on who it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here's the last one. A loving wife has a fling with a man from a meeting and all hell breaks loose. Is she a I or she under the influence? That's the name. Under the influence. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you guys so much for talking with me. We cannot wait to see the movie tonight. Sundays are lit yet again. Um, can you please let them know where they can follow you guys at to, to, to dive more into your crafts? Uh, all of my social media handles are my name. It's the same at Denise Lawton. Um, so you can find me Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Wherever you, just, you can search my name. It'll pop up <laughs> if I'm on there. <laughs> and she's on TV every day because uh, they, they definitely got you recurring on TV every day. Okay, so you're on I got to check my bank account, make sure them checks are going in. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them forget to uh, press that. <laughs> Hey button. <laughs> <laughs> Where can they find you at, Jared? Uh, so I'm Jared Wolford. That's J A R E D, and then Wolford W O F F O R D, and then E N T. So Jared Wolford E N T on IG, on Facebook, Twitter, uh, TikTok. Even though I'm not using that as much as I should, I'm I'm learning from Denise over here. <laughs> Man, TikTok is a whole new world. So you only got to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> And what about you, Mr. Ryan, when you want to get uh, from so, behind the camera? <laughs> so my <laughs> personal is jsn.ryn, so Jason Ryan with no vowels. Um, that's my personal IG, jsn.ryn, but also um, at TV1 TV, um, at Swirl Films. Shout out to Swirl Films, our producing partners. Um, amazing. It's Swirl Films IG. Swirl Films IG at Swirl Films IG and at TV One TV, um, and yeah, that that'll that's where you'll find the posts, you'll find the hashtags, all that Twitter, IG um, for TV One. We got to make sure that we have the hashtag um, for everybody. We'll make sure we tag that so people who are live tweeting um, can have that hashtag. But yep. That's okay. it. Yeah. Okay. And BJ's so, not here, but he is. I am. I think it's at I am BJ Britt. Yeah. Yeah. Already from the trailer, BJ scaring me. So <laughs> just wait. <laughs> so let's leave them off with each of you giving th describing the movie in three words. Denise, we'll start with you. Mm. Ooh, thrilling, emotional, mm. and exciting. Ooh, mm. Jared. Let's go with uh, complicated, spicy, mm. titillating. Titillating. <laughs> Ooh. And look who's coming in. Oh, right on. Oh. Right on. Oh. Oh. You got you to gotta play the game with BJ at least. Play the we'll game do the, with BJ. We'll like definitely play the game. Here we go. We'll definitely play. Talk to so I'm glad I had just mentioned to them how scary you 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 came off on from the trailer. 
Okay. So, okay. Okay. What was it like tapping into that role? Because a brother looked like he snapped. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's fun. Thank you for having me. First off, my apologies, guys. Um, but no, it was a like, like I always. It's a collab. I mean, just working with Jared and Denise, and just having Jason and Courtney on the side, just like having our backs. Like most of that work that you saw on screen was already prepped off screen. Like we had meetings prior to that, you know, how far you can go, how far should we go, you know, what's, you know, what's, where should his head be at that point? So a lot of it was like, you know, let's get on, once we get on set, let's just play. And if we want to do another take, let's change it around and everything like that. But no, it was, it's always interesting to play some, you know, a character that you've never played before. And I'd never experienced a character like that. So it was amazing just to be able to live truth, truthfully through him with the help of Denise and Jared, seriously. Like it was definitely a collab. I can't take credit for any of that, hey. seriously. Now, if I'm feeling the vibe right, it seems like DJ might be like the energy that gets it going on set. Am no, I Am I describing no, this? No, no, no. Listen, listen. <laughs> Once again, it's a collab, because then we all get, that's why I'm like, you know, before I got up here, I was like, all right, let's not got this Zoom. As soon as I saw Denise, as soon as I saw Jared, Jason, I was like, let's go, let's go. <laughs> so, no, I'm telling you, like it's it's definitely fun. And Jason had touched on something earlier because the 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 um the project, I mean, it has its deep, you know, like it 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 has like um it's so intense at times. So when we say cut, you know, we all get together and we can just laugh and joke and you know, you know, like yeah. let loose, you know what I'm saying? So it keeps that balance, that energy, you know, up and you're like, yo, I just saw you go through some crazy joint in that scene, but now we over to side, you know, joking like, yo, grab me something from the craft here. Grab me like we just, you know, having a good time. But, you know, when you see everybody back, because we shot this last year. So, you know, we hadn't seen each other in like forever. So it's just you, you made this reunion happen. So <laughs> that's like super exciting. Like, they go to Deeves, they go to Jared, they go to Jay, you know. So, you know, it's it's always exciting to be able to like, you know, get back together and, you know, do these interviews with, you know with everybody and just see you like seriously and, I, and look and it takes one to know one so i know you got the energy in you too <laughs> you know, it takes one to know one so you get it well speaking of energy so i had played a game with them earlier but I, now we're going to play a game with we're going to get your answers on this okay yeah, let's do it let's do it so um whatever called... jason said is my answer that's what i'm saying <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, jason so, it was a pleasure you guys have a good one to take. No. <laughs> so I'm going to give you some scenarios and you let me know if they are right or they under the influence. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so, okay, let's go. This person has bought three family sized bags of Doritos and ate them all in one night. Are they all right or are they under the influence? Oh, no, they are. They all three bags. They they under some type of influence. You know what I'm saying? They got uh, they got the munchies. They eating three big bags. Yeah, they they under some type of influence. You knew that. Why can't we just be hungry? <laughs> no, she said we. She said we. <laughs> you said they were just hungry. You just said they were just. Denise. You know better. Denise said, "I got all three bags, and I'm getting yeah, ready to go in." <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. The next one was the shoulder on the highway has become a lane and they are flying through traffic. Are uh, they all right or under the influence? They all right. That's ATL. That's East Coast driving. They all right. We right here, man. <laughs> we, we good. We good. You can do that all day. See, he <laughs> said it. That is East Coast driving. The shoulder is our friend here. That's North okay. Carolina. We do that all the time. <laughs> That's easy. That's easy. <laughs> okay. So I had played with Jason with this one. I said, call time on set was at 8 a.m., but they showed up at 11 a.m. Were they all right or under the influence? Destiny's. 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 I'm early. I I'm never late to set. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm still playing. They, uh, are they all right or under are they, they on something? Because we're trying to go. We're trying to get in. <laughs> we're trying to get in and get out. Like, you know, we can do that later. We can do that after we round. But. They under, they under some type of influence. Hey. They like that. Like, nah, nah. <laughs> and then lastly, I said a loving wife has a fling with a man from a meeting and all hell breaks loose. Is she a high or under the influence? I mean, if she with Jason, she a high, yo. Like, <laughs> Jay, she a high. That's right, dog. Get it. If she with Jason, she, that's, man, that's a regular Tuesday for Jason. That's, that's not a regular, regular Tuesday for Jason. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, my name Bennett. I ain't in it. <laughs> oh, I'm taking in trouble for no reason. My, my, my apology. Listen, I wasn't talking about this, Jason. B, B, oh, right. BJ is BJ. We was talking is, about Jason. Uh, Jason Reynolds. Yeah. yeah, Jason. Jason. BJ was so BJ was trying so hard to to make a joke that he didn't realize that was the movie. See, there you go. Right. See, there you go. <laughs> That's what happens when you do transfer of energy. <laughs> Deflection. Yeah. So I had asked this last question before I let you guys go. So okay. Denise and Jared have already given it to me. So now I want to hear from you and Jason. Describe the movie in three words. What did Jared say? <laughs> he used one of your words. He did. He, he, did. Like, he, he, did. he used titillating. <laughs> Yeah, he did, did what the word was. I didn't even realize it was your word, bro. See, this is what he, he tried to steal it because I want up. He was like, he ain't gonna make it. Let me use his word. <laughs> Let me use it. <laughs> he stole BJ my word. knew what word it was. Uh, BJ was right right excited to use that word the other bro, day. I was, I was like, Jared. so excited. <laughs> okay, so Jared and I are gonna use titillating. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh three words, two more words. Um oh. Um, sexy, sexy. It, from from everybody's standpoint, not even mine. Just every as a whole, it's a sexy movie. It's a sexy movie. It's got it's got a lot. Um, a lot and um, uh, not a lot of sex. I don't want to throw that out there, like, but I'm just. <laughs> and then um, and um, passion, passion, Ooh. very passionate. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's dope. It's dope. It's got a. It's got so many levels. Mm -hmm. I keep throwing our adjectives. Like seriously, like it's a dope movie. It really oh, is. And okay. everybody just brings it. I know you didn't ask it, but everybody brings it, like, from start to finish. Like, oh, you only got to tell me. I saw the trailer. I'm over here. My heart already beating fast. Oh, so I'm like, okay. Lord, okay. I'm a, I might have to be under the influence while I'm yeah, watching. Yeah, there you go. Watch <laughs> party. <laughs> now, what about you, Jason? What's your three words? Um, Intense. Mm. Um, Deep. That's what she said. Deep. There's a lot of depth in the characters. And exciting. Oh, BJ, I just caught you just ruined. What are you talking about? I didn't do nothing. What are you, no, I'm not doing this with you, Jason. Look, just stay focused, man. Dang, stay focused. BJ man. had to take it back to, to the 10th grade joke. <laughs> I, I ain't even catch it at first. <laughs> Listen, I'm I'm just agreeing with you. I'm like, that's what Denise was talking. Yeah, like everybody was like, yeah, you know. Never mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm not doing it too time. Jason, I'm proud of you. Those are some really good ones. Thank Give it to you. us again one more time, please. Give it to us one more time. Nah, Jake, I mean, you are an idiot. It's an intense. <laughs> now it doesn't even have the same meaning. I need another word. No, it's, my head so <laughs> it's intense. It's it's exciting and it's entertaining. Hey, there we go. Entertaining. <laughs> Now, <laughs> this ball of energy, Mr. BJ Britt, please let them know where they can follow you and find you. Oh, I, I am BJ Britt on all social media platforms. Yeah. Hey, well, I thank you guys so much. And we are so excited to see the premiere of Under the Influence tonight on TV One. Sundays are lit. I want to thank you guys for talking to me. I'm your boy, the Media Prince, and we are out. Thank you for having us. Yeah, you know it.